Before we talk about tonight's major changes to the vaccination advice, just on quotas, where are both of you at? Conchetta? Well, I've been against quotas for a long time and I remain against, uh, against quotas. What we've seen in Parliament that has led to this discussion is the bad behaviour of certain politicians should not be used as an excuse to change pre-selection processes and argue for quotas. I think that's illogical and it's wrong. Selection and pre-selection should be on merit and that is the only way uh, to proceed. I mean, for all the reasons that you've just discussed in relation to airline pilots and for other reasons, promotion and selection should be on merit. And those people who are... Uh, behaving badly should be made responsible for their own behaviour, not change the pre-selection processes. Claire? Well, I do have a different view about it. Um, I think if we, if we could only have a meritocracy in Parliament, then we'd have a Parliament that actually fully represented the Australian community. But we don't have a meritocracy, and I think you only need to look at you know, the recent performance of the government to see that, you know, the current system isn't actually delivering the best and brightest into our parliament. But it's chosen um, you know, by when the I look people. At the, the, uh, well, Chris, I mean, really, I, I, I'm shocked that anyone's really arguing that there's a meritocracy in our federal parliament and Conchetta, you know, interested to hear whether you agree with that or not. But we have a parliament today where on the conservative side of politics, there's probably two men for every woman. Now, Surely no one in it watching today believes that men are twice as likely to be smart and capable as women. Of course not. The truth not, is that there are barriers and clear parties for people participating, up. and we have to fix those in some Claire, way. Claire, Claire, can, can I just quote is what we end up with is a parliament that doesn't represent the community, and that's Claire, unfortunately what we're Can I just say this? Today. I'd rather be sitting in Parliament mm. because I deserve to be in Parliament, not because I was chosen as part of a quota. And I know, and I've had the discussions yeah. with some of your ladies as well, um, you know, the fact that they have been chosen on a quota um, immediately changes the status. I'd rather be there on merit, and I think this is what that's it about. Yeah. Labor, uh, I mean, uh, just, just a, a, as a person in a party that has quotas, I actually don't feel uncomfortable about it at all. And the reason for that is that when I look at the heaviest hitters in my party, many of them are women who probably wouldn't have ever gotten into Parliament without affirmative action. So okay. the Chris, truth can is I that just, when we um, get the right amount of women into our Parliament, they absolutely skyrocket to the top of their political parties. Um, and I think it's really important that the Parliament re reflect the community and if quotas the way that we do that, then that's how it has to be. Chris, Final can I just... Um, yeah, if I may, um, I wrote a piece for in the Sydney Morning Herald last Friday where I looked at the changes in the system in New South Wales and the New South Wales Liberal Party with the introduction of plebiscites. We've seen a marked increase in the number of people, broader grassroots base, from which I have no doubts will emerge good candidates, including good women, much larger pre-selection panels, and they will be chosen on merit and ultimately uh, reflect the makeup uh, of our party and reflect the makeup of okay. contemporary Australia. OK, I want to move on to this major well, uh, announcement. Could, if I could just say that, that the Liberal Party's been saying that for 25 years now and they've got the same share of women in Parliament as they did in 1994. Well, Meanwhile, Labor's share has doubled. So I think at some point we've just got to look at the evidence and say what works and what doesn't. Okay. Well, this will the be approach the first... I want to move on. Today, We're not going working. to get to one of the biggest uh, announcements that concerns women today unless we stop that bickering about quotas. I think we can talk about that until the cows come home. But the... Sexual Discrimination Act, bringing in judges and politicians who can be um, investigated and charged for harassment or sexual discrimination in the workplace. What you saw today from the Attorney-General and the Prime Minister, Claire, was it encouraging? Oh, well, I think it's ridiculous and disgraceful that politicians and judges weren't included in those laws to begin with. Without I mean, doubt. why on earth you would exclude people who have power in the community uh, out of these very important laws to protect our employees just doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm pleased to see that. I'm, I'm very disappointed it took um, all the scandals and all of the issues and all the, the alleged criminal conduct for us to get to a point where we've got a thorough response to the Respect at Work report. But, look, the, the most critical thing is that we do see change from here yep. and I'm watching and waiting for that change to occur. Yeah, Conchetta, it had to happen. Um, I think both the Prime Minister and Christina Keneally were agreeing that it's only happened because of recent events, but putting that aside, it has happened and accepting those 55 recommendations in part or in full 
or on behalf of state agencies, I think is a massive, a massive change. And we've still got Kate Jenkins' recommendations to come, haven't we? Well, Chris, yes, uh, and it's good that uh, we have had this uh, response today. And I, I think it's appropriate that the Sex Discrimination Act uh, now be uh, changed to include judges, politicians and public servants. And so I'm sure there'll be legislation brought into the parliament and we look forward to uh, bipartisan support in relation to those changes.